Welcome to example number 13. We have a crate that rests on an inclined plane of an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. The mass of the crate is 50 kilograms and we're told that it accelerates down the ramp at an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. The length of the incline is 10 meters from the very top to all the way down to the bottom. And we're asked to find a number of things like kinetic energy and the work spent and overcoming friction and then the determine the frictional force. Now there is a way to solve this problem using uh, dynamics, summing the forces in the x and the y and determining the force of friction. But this, the point of this question is to determine this using uh, a energy approach. So in part A, we're asked to determine the kinetic energy of the crate as it reaches the bottom. And the kinetic energy formula is given by one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Now we know the mass is 50 kilograms, but we do not know the velocity that the block would have when it gets down to the bottom. So we need to determine that. Now in this particular case, you'll have to use kinematics to determine the velocity. We'll assume that the velocity initial of the block at the very top is zero meters per second. And so we need to find out how much speed the block would have at the bottom. So we're going to use v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. And at the initial speed we assumed is 0, so the final speed at the bottom squared would be 2 times the acceleration, which is 2 meters per second squared, times the displacement of 10 meters along the hypotenuse of that triangle. This will give you a final speed squared of 40 meters squared over second squared. So the velocity would be the square root of that. But I'm not going to go ahead and find the velocity because all I really need is velocity squared. So now the kinetic energy would be 1 half times the mass, which is 50 kilograms, times the velocity squared, which is 40 meters squared over second squared. This will give you an answer of 1,000 kilograms times meters squared over second squared. That's really a kinetic energy of 1,000 joules. Okay, now moving on to part B. So part B is asking you to determine the work done by the frictional force. You see, as the block slides down the ramp, the total energy of the crate is not constant. It actually loses some energy. It dissipates its energy uh, due to the friction in the surface here. So work is done by friction, and that energy is eventually turned to other forms, most likely are mostly thermal energy. So to determine the work done by friction, um, because it's a non-conservative force, it is equal to the change in energy of the crate. And the change in energy is what energy it had finally minus the energy the crate had at the bottom, at the top, sorry, initially. At the um, bottom of the ramp, we can assume that the potential energy is zero because it's reached the very bottom and that it's all kinetic energy. So the final energy is really just the kinetic energy we determined earlier, which was 1,000 joules. So this is the kinetic energy finally. So really this was the kinetic energy final that we found out here. The initial energy of the block is, uh, well, it's made up of kinetic potential, but we released it at rest. So it really only has potential energy. So this is the potential energy initially. Now the potential energy initially is equal to mgh. So the mass is 50 kilograms, the g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height, the height is the height of the ramp. If you look closely, you have 10 meters along the hypotenuse and an angle of 30 degrees. So if we use sine of 30 degrees, which is opposite height over hypotenuse, 10 meters, we'll get a height of 10 times sine 30 degrees in meters. That will work out to a height of 5 meters. So let's go ahead and substitute that into our equation here for potential energy. So that's 5. And I believe when you multiply this out, 50 times 9.8 times 5, you're going to get an answer of 2,450 joules. So at the top of the ramp, you started off with 2,450 joules, but at the bottom of the ramp, you only had 1,000 joules of energy. 
So we have 1,000 joules of energy minus 2,450 joules. Well, where did that missing energy go to? That went to the work done by friction. So it lost 1,450 joules of energy due to the work done by friction. OK, now that we know the work done by friction, we can now work backwards and find the force of friction. So let's go ahead, scroll down here, and find out the force of friction. The work formula says that it's equal to the force times the displacement times the angle between the force and the displacement. So this is not 30 degrees, by the way. So for finding the work done by friction is equal to the force of friction times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. So the force of friction is what we're looking for. The work done by friction we just determined in the previous part to be negative 1,450 joules. The displacement, you recall, starting up here and going all the way down here is 10 meters. So this is 10 meters. And then the angle between the force of friction, which is force of friction is up the ramp, but the displacement is down the ramp, that angle between those two vectors is 180 degrees. So we have cos of 180 degrees. So the force of friction would be equal to negative 1,450 joules divided by, well, 10 times, this is really negative 1, so divided by negative 10 meters, and this will work out to 145 newtons of force. Now there is a, an alternate way of solving this problem. You could have found out the force of friction, just to double check, you could have solved this just an alternate way here. So just to check here and show you a different way, we could draw a free body diagram, the normal force, the force of friction, and then the force of gravity acted at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical here. And it accelerates downwards at A. So just to review what we did before, back when we did forces, you could have solved this right by using sum of forces equals MA. So we have the, uh, along the x-axis, we would have MG sine 30, that is the x component of this weight, minus the force of friction equals MA. And so the force of friction should be equal to mg sine 30 minus ma. So you would have 50 times 9.8 times sine of 30, which is a half, minus 50 times 2. And that will give you an answer of 145 newtons. Wow, it's the same answer. So two different ways of solving a problem now. You could use a dynamics problem, dynamics way when we did some of the forces, or you can solve this using the work done by friction and energy approach. And this is the way we're going to try to solve it now, and you'll find sometimes it's going to be much easier to do it this way. And that's it for this example.